Hi, everybody. Wishing all of you a very good evening. And thank you for joining us on a Wednesday, on a weekday evening. Uh, we're more than excited to be talking about one of our premier universities uh, who've pioneered a very affordable and accessible democratized model of studying MS in the United States. Uh, we have with us Yeshua University today. Yeshua is not only one of the top 1% universities in the world, but it's ranked 68th in the US out of about 4,800 universities and about uh, top 50 for research in the US. So uh, it, it, is that one, it is that one institution to be looking forward to. Uh, we're super thrilled to host them. We have gotten with us today, uh, Jared Hakimi, who's the Director of Graduate Admissions at Yeshiva. We've got Xavier, who is the Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions. And finally, we've got Jackie, who is the Director of Global Engagement and New Business Development. Uh, the school in discussion is the Cat School of Science and Health at Yeshiva University. For all of you aspiring to study in the US, Yeshiva is in New York, which I am sure uh, is keeping you super excited if you're aspiring to study in, in the US. Um, while the major topic of discussion is going to be how do you choose the right MS? which MS has the largest scope in the US for the next five or 10 years? And also what are some of the career progressions attributable to every MS program that you can take in the United States? But I think largely we're gonna be talking about which are some of the new eight subjects and what kind of jobs will you end up getting? We will talk about uh, what are the salaries going to be? We are gonna talk about how is the curriculum designed? We're gonna talk about um, how is it that the U.S. education system uh, is going to help you uh, develop your skills in a more experientially led manner? And what kind of skills do you need to navigate the U.S. job market? So we'll talk about all of that. But I think to begin with, I will introduce what Upgrad is. So Upgrad is a higher education platform, one of the world's largest and South Asia's largest. Uh, Upgrad helps some of the best universities in the world in the design, development, and delivery of their online programs. Uh, we're getting some of the highly ranked universities across the world and making them more accessible, affordable, and democratized for Indian students, especially for working graduates who are looking to upskill themselves, uh, but don't really have the time. So we let them know that, hey, you know what? You can still continue doing your job, get yourself enrolled into a program and maybe transfer to the United States or Canada or Australia or the UK in one year. So we give them enough time to plan their finances, enough time to develop the right skill set so that they can champion their new lives academically and on professional front as well. With that, I welcome all of you all over again. For our, I can see about 25 of you have just joined in. Um, Wishing all of you a super great evening. Like I said, we've got with us Jackie, who is the Director of Global Engagement and New Business Development at Yeshiva University. Hi, Jackie. It is good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you so much for organizing this event. Thank you so much. Um, then we've got Jared, who is the Director of Graduate Admissions. Um, and Xavier, who you've already met, who is the Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions at Yeshiva University. I think we should start in another two minutes. We'll just wait for everybody else to join in. We're, we're seeing numbers rapidly surging. Uh, meanwhile, if you guys have got any questions, you can always put them down in the Q&A button. The programs in discussion are going to be MS in Artificial Intelligence, MS in Data Analytics, and finally, MS in Cybersecurity, three of the most cutting edge research driven, future ready, and new age subjects that you can possibly pick up and, you know, absolutely future proof your next 10 to 15 years of your life. I mean, it's too bold to be saying that, but, but, but I am hoping that if you're studying these three, you're going to be good. Uh, an another maybe one or two minutes and then we'll start uh conversing with jackie jared and xavier but but i think we can do a uh warm-up uh thing first i just just want want to hear from you guys about 
why is it that studying MS or studying technology in the US makes the most amount of sense? Why is US the most lucrative market? What kind of opportunities does US give to MS students that no other country in the world does? Yeah, so first off, one piece that is really wonderful about the US and particularly our university is the academic quality and the breadth of the projects that faculty are working on. Um, we'll delve into it a little bit more and you mentioned our, of course, our high academic ranking, um, but you know, universities like ours that have been around for more than a century, we've built um, you know, academic processes over the years and some of the professional relationships that I think are really necessary. So, you know, as you mentioned, Praneet, we've got uh, degrees in AI, cybersecurity, and data analytics that are available. Um, these are fields that are booming. And, you know, the United States aspect of this market uh, is super crucial. So by studying with us, you know, students have the opportunity to be directly involved with that market, you know, especially with our New York City location, as New York City is very much a hub for all these fields. Got it. I think that does uh, make sense and gives everybody a good context. Uh, my next question or my next ask of you uh, is that one of you could introduce Yeshua University to everybody here. We'd love to know more about the university from you guys. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll be happy to do that. So Yeshiva University now, um, it has been around for more than a century. Uh, this is a university that has been located in New York City throughout its history. Um, you will delve into a little bit, a little bit in, shortly too, but uh, you mentioned our number 68 ranking in the country. That actually puts us in the top five uh, of New York City-based universities. Uh, this is a university that students will know, and as you read up on our university, we have a rich uh, Jewish history and tradition. Uh, that that's very relevant too for our undergraduates with their dual curriculum but our graduate students in our programs like ai cybersecurity data analytics don't have a religious component of any kind but also our experience uh as as a community that isn't necessarily a majority community in the united states allows us to create a very welcoming atmosphere for all students so you'll notice that we have students from various cultures and religions and ethnicities all coming together around a common goal in very exciting fields and very exciting academic programs. And the other piece that we've been able to build over the years is community. So you'll see small class sizes as well, real uh, access to faculty and access to industry through our programs. So our identity is very, very exciting because on the one hand, we're, you know, an, an exciting highly ranked university that gets a lot of interest from students. But on the other hand, we're a community where with small class sizes and a great academic experience. Yes, and also believe that some of these things that you mentioned are extremely essential for having a good academic experience for any student. Uh, and one that's very rounded and holds some. Uh, for everybody else to know, I think, uh, what's important is that we've just pioneered on a model with Yeshiva University where students uh, can actually enroll themselves into an MS program without GRE. Uh, you do a triple IDB advanced certificate program in either artificial intelligence or data science or cybersecurity. Uh, and you can finally enter and, uh, you know, into an MS program at Yeshiva after 10 months. So the ACP data science gets you in MS data analytics or MSAI, while the ACP cybersecurity gets you into MS and cybersecurity. So not only do you get a lot of credits waived off, especially if you're studying artificial intelligence, you get three subjects equal into nine credits waived off. That's almost six months of studies or time that you can buy from the university to still plan your transfer to the university campus but also save tons of money. Uh, likewise, because you don't need GRE, you're building that base of knowing all the programming languages or, or knowing more about deep learning, machine learning, uh, linear pro progression, and so on and so forth. So the point being that if you've been out of touch for studies for some time now, it is a good refresher and then lets you get into the MS program, while the ACP, the Advanced Certificate Program, 
will cost you about 3 lakhs. Your studies at Yeshiva, your MS programs will cost you about 23,000 USD, which is about close to uh, 17 and a half lakhs of rupees. So within 20 lakhs, your MS is done. Would love to know from the team, uh, what is the what are some of the career progressions like? So if we're talking about AI, so we're largely, we've brought them here to talk about or to listen to us talk about uh, choosing the right MS. Now, one of the larger factors that they have to look into is what is the employability like? What kind of roles am I going to be seeing for myself? And what are some of the skill set that I must enter the US job market with that maybe Yeshua helps or maybe I am expected to bring with myself when I come to the United States? So would want you to cover those aspects, Jared, Xavier or Jackie. Yeah, so we actually, uh, we will we'll definitely be able to cover that in our, we have a presentation lined up and some slides. So we'll note that and we'll cover it through the slides as well. Yes, I, so I think we're good to go with the slides then. Would love right. to know how do they pick the right one? Yeah, and, bef and we're gonna reference it in a little bit, but quick teaser. What's great about any of these degrees, you know, this is something we'll often talk about. You know, if you're going to be an AI cybersecurity or data analytics, you can actually work within a variety of companies in a variety of roles. So when you consider the programs and do your research, look at the programs that have the curriculum that most excites you, that you most want to experience. Because as far as job opportunities, those will come. Uh, but but you want to find what you're most passionate about for your studies, because that will help. Uh, allow you to be most successful in the future. But we'll share the slides shortly and we'll be able to take you through everything. We've, we've got a lot of them asking about the four-year education model. So a 12 plus four is not necessary for, for, for them. I, I, I think even if you've done a BSc or BCA, you're going to be okay. The, the, the larger part is that you should be from a science or technology background. So whether you're a BSc or BCA, even if you're a three-year degree holder, it's absolutely fine. I think we have a stigma in India that no university in the U.S. will actually pick you up if you're a tw if you're not a 12 plus four grad. So, which is why I wanted to just clear the doubt. Excellent. So, shall we uh, shall we share the slides? All right. Excellent. Roger. <laughs> Copy that. So everybody, welcome. You know, I I, I first want to mention that it's uh, just so wonderful to be with you today, to be with my colleagues, Jackie and Xavier as well, who uh, I love working with every day, and of course, Praneet from Upgrad as well. So it's great to speak with you. Uh, we did introduce the university a little bit, but we're with the Cat School of Science and Health at Yeshiva University. This is a school that focuses on areas like artificial intelligence and biotech and cybersecurity, health sciences, data analytics, um, and is really making a difference overall. And what we're doing is making the world smarter, safer, and healthier. As you learned, uh, we're one of the best universities in the United States. Uh, we're one of the best value schools, as, as you also uh, will learn in this presentation and, and surely uh, can learn from Upgrad as well. Uh, so you can really see wonderful return on your investment. But as I mentioned, you know, not only being one of the best universities in the U.S., we're one of the top universities in New York City. You know, of course, you'll want to note, too, that we have optional practical training that uh, you'll be eligible for by doing this master's degree. So if you find a position uh, uh, at, for after your degree, you can get 12 months of OPT. However, because these are STEM focused programs, you're gonna have a 24 month additional extension that you can get as long as you meet all those guidelines as well. So that's something to note too, based on the current regulations of the government. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we've been around for a while. You know, We've distinguished ourselves in various academic areas, uh, but certainly, you know, these, these areas that we're talking about today, AI, cybersecurity, data analytics, these are fields that matter. These are fields that are going to continue to matter. And we have faculty that are at the forefront of this. So when you take that into account and take into account the overall Yeshiva University community and our alumni and uh, our presence in New York City, uh, 
it's not just that, but we're very much known across the globe. So I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, Xavier, who will talk to you a little bit about the CATS experience. Absolutely, thank you, Jared, for that nice introduction. Um, in terms of the CATS experience, it's important to know the international community that we have here. Um, students do come from over 30 different countries around the globe. And we saw that present <clears throat> this past week, excuse me, during our graduation, which was just yesterday. And actually we had our poster session um, last week, which was really exciting. And, and we'll show some of that content a little later today. Um, and as Jared noted, faculties are leaders in their industry, whether it's AI, cybersecurity, data analytics, you'll be working with individuals and faculty members who have that experience in the field. And also noting that there's flexibility once you are enrolled in classes, um, noting that classes are typically in the evening, which does provide flexibility um, for you to either be working on your schoolwork or potentially seeking that internship opportunity during semester three. Um, one thing that's very important to note is that the coursework is project based. Um, so it's you'll be working with that hands on experience, being able to work in groups, develop, um, take theory and put it into practice, whether it's in the cybersecurity realm, um, for example, where students get to divide, divide themselves into the red team, blue team, red team is conducting a cyber attack and beat and blue team is instructed to defend that cyber attack. Um, which we'll see more about later um, during one of the presentations, well, during one of the poster sessions that students um, received. And important that to note that as a student, you'll receive industry mentorship during your time as a student. Um, you'll have the opportunity to showcase your capstone at our annual conference, which we just, which I was just referencing. Um, and again, publish your capstone in our conference proceedings, which is a huge opportunity and something that you potentially could add to your resume and take to a job interview, take to a presentation and say, hey, this is tangible experience that I had in my MS degree. And my MS degree. Um, important to note that, you know, we do have the CAT school um, in terms of our school here at the CATS and our faculty members, our AI programs, cyber and data analytics, but we're also part of the greater yeshiva community um, where students have access to different um, innovations and different, um, uh, you know, different ideas going on on campus, such as the YU Innovation Lab, where this provides a space for students to collaborate with uh, Israeli startups and potentially, um, which potentially does include workshops um, and just counsel from from industry leaders um, out in Israel um, who have connections here to the New York City and Yeshiva, New York, Yeshiva University as a whole. Um, so again, important to note the opportunities that are afforded to students at the CAT school where you are at a small at a small campus having that small camp that small school work experience, but also have access to the greater Yeshiva University, which, as Jared noted, has a rich, rich history um, in terms of its legacy and its stamp in New York City. And talking about New York City, it's important to note again, you're in the US capital for global business. You, the city has, <clears throat> excuse me, over 8 million people um, and 20 million in the greater metropolitan area. And yes, there's an opportunity, there will be opportunities to work with large companies, um, but there's also opportunities to work with small and medium sized companies where there are, um, you know, a dime a dozen. You look outside and there's business, businessmen, um, companies, you see um, offices and different uh, companies being able to establish themselves here in New York City. And also noting the diverse community that New York City has, um, where New York City, you know, frankly speaking, you'll be able to enjoy food from within the entire world and, and find communities in different ways, whether it be through um, engaging in food, culture, sports, um, and just kind of, you know, talking about um, outside of the classroom. Yes, in New York City, A, inside of the classroom, New York City is important because you have that presence and access to the greater New York City um, global business capital, um, but there's also the opportunity to find yourself and find yourself as a student, as a as a person um, who's making a big who could potentially make that transition um, from a foreign country into New York City um, and find a sense of community in the process. Studying in New York City, um, again, our 
our campus, our building is conveniently located in midtown Manhattan. What that means is I look out the window at any given point in time and I see a stream of yellow cabs going up and down Lexington Avenue. Um, but it also provides flexibility in terms of transportation in the sense that New York City or the campus, uh, Vernon campus here on 33rd Street and in Lexington is extremely accessible for a variety of housing options. I myself, I come from the last stop on the sixth line, which is all the way in the Bronx, and I make it door to door in about an hour. Um, but there's also opportunities to live a little bit closer to campus in other boroughs, such as Brooklyn, Queens, or Jersey City, which could be commutable in anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, depending if you're able to catch the, catch the express train. And you also have the island of Manhattan, um, which is open to student housing, um, whether it be near Vernon campus or at one of the other closer to the um, uptown campus, which is Wilf campus. Graduate students typically don't have classes there, um, but it is a more affordable neighborhood um, in terms of cost of living. So something to consider in terms of um, the Washington Heights, Harlem and that type of area. In terms of students being successful on campus, we want our students to be successful on campus. And um, through that, we have the Center of Career Strategy and Professional Development. Um, we wanna make sure that our students come to CATS and they're able to have a great experience and also graduate and go on and find jobs in their field. Keeping in mind that as Jared noted, um, the CAT school and a lot of these programs were designed with industry in mind in the sense that we know that these job, these industries, these degrees um, will allow a student to find a job thereafter. In the process of being a CAT student, you can head to the career services office to receive support in terms of resume, cover letter writing, individual career advising, and also potentially have career preparedness workshops in the process. In talking about graduation and thereafter, um, we're extremely excited that 95% of our students um, have been employed within six months of graduation. And in companies that, you know, both large and small, um, some even startups, but some as large as JP Morgan and IBM as listed there. Um, you know, I know we were having the question of what type of jobs can we get with these degrees? Um, and there are some of the um, actual job titles of our alumni in terms of their machine learning engineers, their data analysts, data engineers, cybersecurity advisory consultants, senior data scientists. And these are some of the roles that you would be able to potentially secure with the degree in AI, cybersecurity, or data analytics. Jared, I'll hand it off to you at this point in time to close us up, to bring us home. Do you, do you mind going to the last slide again? Save yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, this is just wanted to keep it here for a couple of seconds more so students can take a look at it. Uh, this is by far the most important slide because they, 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 they can reimagine their life entirely um, if they can see themselves in Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. That's going to be better, like, better. And while you all take a look, you know, a few things worth mentioning. Of course, it's not an exhaustive list of the positions or types of positions that you can get. And that's a great aspect of studying with us is, you know, you're, you're getting an experience where you will be exposed to a lot of areas of your chosen industry with that, those small classes, class sizes, the faculty accessibility. So it lets you really imagine where you wanna see yourself and then build a plan, right? Taking into account um, guidance you can get from our scholar practitioners, but also from our offices like the Career Center in kind of a smaller community, even though you're within New York City. So it can really help you to potentially, I wouldn't even necessarily say think big because maybe nothing is too big, but focus accordingly. So you may have other plans that are not listed here. Um, you know, it's likely that we might have had a, an alum do types of things that you're looking to do, but this list will continue to grow. Absolutely. I think a lot of them are also anxious if they've not had a previous work experience, can they still enter? Just, just would want you, I mean, want, want to jump in at this point, love to tell that the reason that you start with the foundation degree course which is an advanced certificate program in either data science 
or cybersecurity is for you to equip yourself with enough skills that a work experience could have given to you to start an MS degree course in a specific niche as AI or DS or cybersecurity. So that those 10 months are very rigorous. They're very gruesome, but they're also uh, going to be largely equipping you with every necessary skill. That's why GRE is waved off because you have those 10 months to exhibit your academic readiness. So we don't need work experience per se. I think Jared and Xavier could add to that. But we, we just need you to come from a science and technology degree background. Three years or four years does not matter. But having a specific GPA, that does. So you should have at least three or above CGPA when you're doing the triple IT course in order for you to transfer to Yeshiva University. So that's important, but work experience is not. Back to you, Jared. Thank you. And also to quickly address too, like to whom we're presenting, we've had um, wonderful Indian students come through our doors, students who came from India, studied for, gra for graduate school. Um, and we highly value the academic community coming out of India. We've been to India already several times in the past. I myself have been to five cities in India uh, and, and I'm always very impressed with, with the students that I meet. Um, so we have several success stories already coming out of India and we're excited to see uh, some of you walk through our doors hopefully in the future. So in terms of the next slide, you know that, that, that's a quick summary of, um, of essentially what these opportunities are for you. You know, you've got, um, and this, the next slide will, will display shortly, but you've got um, basically three opportunities. I actually can't see the next slide, so I'll pull it up on my end. Can you see the slide that lists triple ITB right now? Or do I have a technical difficulty? There we go. No, we can't. Great. So, um, so basically, this is in short what the opportunity is with us. You know, as Praneet mentioned, uh, you have a great opportunity through Triple ITB to uh, to get that academic experience prior to coming over here uh, and then having the credits transfer. You know, the 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 tuition fee for uh, an American uh, university of our caliber, a New York City based university, is a really wonderful value. I know this too because we've done a lot of research on other universities out there as well. Um, and for what you're getting, it's pretty incredible. And then also by being able to get some of that preparation too in India before you come over, you're able to really uh, have an even better sense of how you wanna tackle the 12 months that you'll be here. And then also um, by being here for, for let's say 12 months rather than two years for the degree, you're also able to save on living costs. And this is of course taking into account a lot of the ways you can save money due to our central location and proximity to rail and bus lines, as Xavier um, also alluded to earlier. So, um, so yeah, these are definitely exciting opportunities, and we're looking forward to to hopefully seeing you here. Yeah, and so that that uh, that does it for now. Great. I can go ahead. I think and that was up. very comprehensive. Thank and you. just, I would, if you give us one second, I'm just switching between my share settings, um, <laughs> just to share some some of the things that happened, you know, this past week, which, which again, we want to be able to show, you know, things that are happening in real time on campus in terms of the student experience. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, this having... was days ago, so it's it's pretty great. Absolutely. Please go ahead. Uh, we can do a quick sound check, though. Oh, yeah. That's probably going to... should probably double check that. Thank you. Yeah, so when you go to share, share, share screens and just you know, go back. Uh, Climate change is already here. Its impact is already being felt. So just Atrish, who's uh, an AI... Oops. Climate change... Yep. Climate change is already here. Its impact is already being felt by the economy. We wanted to see like what the cost of climate change effectively is 
two companies that own real estate looked at how they were impacted by hurricanes. And what we noticed was that hurricanes were increasingly costing these companies money. We basically collated data from several sources regarding like hurricane data from NOAA, asset data from S&P. The data that we use is analyzed using machine learning and uh, advanced mathematical techniques to show that there is a projected growth in expenses for companies, individuals, insurance companies in the future. The more um, temperature rise we have on a global scale, the much more likely that we're going to have more intense, more frequent hurricanes. As like, climate change progresses, companies that own assets are going to lose more and more money to damage um, from hurricanes. Derek, could you talk a little bit about Atricia's internship? Did, were you in the loop on his internship? I know he had a, a pretty solid internship experience, right? Uh, yes. So um, I believe he, he, he and possibly a few other members of the program had interned at Standard and Poor's, as in you know the S and P five hundred, um, and uh, and they had a real opportunity to to work on some some projects, you know, in some real world projects. I'm actually going to message him right now and ask him to give me a quick synopsis as well. So and I can share sure, and I'll go ahead and share the next two videos from our cybersecurity team. I believe this one was about the blue and red team that I've referenced earlier. My career transition from a police officer into cybersecurity and captured the flag events were fundamental in my ability to learn new techniques and tactics and procedures. I wanted to try and give that back to students here at Yeshiva. It would be something new uh, outside the classroom that they could kind of do hands-on to learn the skills a little bit differently and maybe even easier. I designed all the challenges. It was mainly focused around cybersecurity, information security, and it was kind of like my little brainchild. We call it blue teaming, which is like the defensive side, red teaming, which is the offensive side, in each different category to try and complete challenges use skills that they learned during their time in at Yeshiva. I want to do this because I wanted to show the students that, hey, these things are fun. You don't have to worry about like not being skilled in certain things and you could figure this stuff out. Don't be afraid to try something new. Get behind the keyboard and, you know, practice and you'll be amazed at what you could actually learn. It's, it's, it's really incredible. Then one more final video, just again, for reference and, and to potentially see what our students are doing and potentially begin to imagine what you can do in the future, potentially at Yeshiva. So someone can break into my bank with two-factor authentication just by faking a SIM card. Two-factor authentication system, basically a text-based system, which you, which we receive as an email uh, to our mobile phone. If I have an empty SIM card, I might be able to click program the SIM card into your mobile number. You might not be uh, aware about this. Text two-factor authentication can be beat then, so what's the fix? To overcome this issue, we can use some uh, facial recognition uh, systems like a Face ID. But the Face ID requires a lot of processing power. My aim was actually to find the best way to process the image and uh, securely authenticate the user. So what I developed was a, a small authentication engine which uses 2D face maps to store your facial data into a matrix and process it uh, as soon as possible. So how did you land on this research idea? In this course, uh, I uh, read a lot of articles regarding the security breaches and most of them were tried to authentication. And most of them can be easily tackled with a biometric based system, which is face recognition. I think we've got a lot of questions stacked up. I'll just take a minute of your time, Xavier, and just maybe put some questions to you guys, and then we can play back the videos. Uh, could you repeat about something that you mentioned without the GRE? We can go for the MS like this could happen when we're still working. Would it be better to take a break? Could you just once clearly tell again about the past without GRE? Yes. Yeah, so uh, all three MS programs at Yeshiva. MS in data analytics, MS in cybersecurity, and MS in artificial intelligence. All three of them can be started while you're still in India. You finish the first two or first three subjects in India, three in case of MSAI, two in case of MS cybersecurity or DA. Uh, GRE as an entry requirement is not required anymore. Rather, you do an advanced certificate program in data science from IIIT Bangalore or an advanced certificate program in cybersecurity from IIIT Bangalore that gives you the requisite skill set academically 
and experientially that you need to champion the program when you go to the US. So GRE is basically an academic readiness exam. If you can prove it by doing it, I don't think you need to take the test anymore. So you're doing those 10 months long course to prove your academic readiness. You need a 3C GPA on it to get to Yeshiva. And you can very well continue your job for the next 12 months. By that time, you'll not only do the 10 month course in at IIIT Bangalore through Upgrad, but also we will be applying for your uh, student visa, the F1 visa. And I'd ultimately, you know, get you seamlessly transferred to the U.S. campus. Hope I answered that for you. Uh, the visa, like Jared mentioned, is one plus two. It's a three-year OPT because all of these three are STEM courses, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, STEM courses, which is big, which is why you get the three-year OPT. The next question is, Jared, for you, I am basically from aeronautical engineering. I'm thinking of taking data science in masters. Does it require a, an experience since I'm from a non-technical background? Uh, Jared, well, while he's still not from a non-tech background, he still wants to know that if he's an aeronautical engineer or he's done his bachelor's from there, uh, can he take his DS in masters? Uh, sorry, can, 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 can he do a master of science in DS? Yeah, generally there's a pathway to it in that situation. We have learned that if folks work with the tools that they're going to need for the degree, even if they haven't had the academic background, that at times that could that could actually be very good preparation for them. You know, essentially coming into the data analytics and visualization program program, you want to have a background in uh, in mathematics, so calculus, in statistics and in programming. And so if that's something you've been able to get professionally, then that's a big positive. And then also um, what's nice is as part of the upgrad program, you have an opportunity to potentially do some of that coursework first through triple ITB to get more comfortable and get more confident. So generally we would recommend pursuing your program of choice that has the, the curriculum that you're looking for uh, and then taking it from there. Thank you so much, Jared. Uh, a few of them also asked about the fee, fee structure. So when, when, when they're still in India, they're, they're doing the advanced certificate program, you're paying three lakhs of rupees. When you transfer to Yeshiva University, you pay $23,000, which is the one year fee. Uh, an MS program in the US largely can take you as long as two years. So we've shortened that to one year so you can enter the job market more earlier. Uh, on an accelerated track, which is why it's called the Master's Accelerator Program. Uh, $23,000 would mean about 17 lakhs. I think I could go back to Jared to ask about the average living cost in New York City. It's not a, uh, not a very affordable place to live in, but I think I can still go back to Jared and ask which borough to sort of uh, look for a housing in, and what do you think is the average living cost, Jared? Yeah, sure. So. I'll definitely, I'll definitely be open to my colleagues jumping in at any point if they have other additional information to add. But the one thing I want to start with is that, because um, I, I want to break it down for you generally first, our pro, where our program is, right, for the coursework for all three of these graduate programs, they're all in Midtown Manhattan around like Lexington Avenue and East 33rd Street. Uh, it's about an eight minute walk from the Empire State Building. Now, if you live right by the Empire State Building, sure, living costs will be pretty expensive. However, because of where we're located, we're near various transit hubs that will take you all through the greater New York City area and allow you to save a lot of money on living costs. So where you'll be paying a lot less than you would expect. So for example, uh, only about a two minute walk is the subway. Right on our campus is the bus. You have express buses, you have the PATH train, which can take you to places like Jersey City, New Jersey for a 20 minute PATH train ride. That's a 10 minute walk from our campus. You have the Long Island Railroad and the New Jersey transit trains. You have buses from Port Authority. These are all in Midtown, Metro North train. So what I'm saying is you can live in parts of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and have a commute of an hour or less. It's over a huge swath of the area just because of the location of our campus. That's very unique to us. 
Now, what are some advantages of that? One advantage is, of course, you can save money on living costs. The other one is, though, we have evening coursework, generally a few evenings a week. So that allows us to get faculty practitioners to teach the coursework. Some of your classmates already are going to be working in industry here and taking the program in the evenings, but it also gives you the chance to commute less. So not only can you can you live in various areas and save a lot of money, uh, but but what's nice is you're commuting less. So it even gives you a little bit more flexibility there where you can take your time back and use it um, very efficiently. So that's something very important to have in mind about our programs and is a huge differentiator. We're literally in the best location we could want for, a, for students who are looking to get value, not only out of their education experience, but also out of their living. Thanks, Jared. Uh, we've got more questions. You're welcome. Zaki, if you're not able to maintain that GPA, you can always reattempt and do better, but you, you need, need at least 3.0 GPA. in uh, your studies. Uh, we had a few more questions, uh, Jared, one second. Uh, are there any scholarships to study at Yeshiva? Yeah, so it's a great question. You know, the this opportunity through Upgrad um, is actually a scholarship. Uh, so the, the, the cost is uh, significantly reduced for these programs from uh, what, what it generally would be. So it, I think it, it varies for each program, but it's in, in the thousands of dollars in terms of the scholarship discount that's built in. So as we mentioned too earlier, I mean, the, the value of these programs is really high. We, the way that we've built the fee structure generally is like, even if, if you were to be paying the traditional tuition and fees for the program, there's a lot of value there, but, um, at the rate that you're able to pay for the courses that you're taking with us through the through this opportunity, uh, it's a great opportunity. We wouldn't hesitate to uh, to uh, to recommend applications. Got that. The next question is: Is a three-year bachelor's degree accepted? Yes. So for uh, typically your master's of science in artificial intelligence, you need to be a BE or BTEC or BSc holder in IT or computer science or BSc mathematics or BCA. You just need to have 60% marks in your graduation to get through. Uh, if you're doing MS cybersecurity, you need the same BE, BTEC or BSc in IT or computer science. So either BE, BTEC, BSc or BSc mathematics, 60%. And likewise, for all three, it's the same criteria. Uh, and a three-year degree. Uh, uh, so typically, BSc, BCA in India are going to be three-year degrees. Yes, that they're, they're accepted. Uh, are there any employment opportunities after the course completion? So Jared and Xavier did take you through some of the slides, uh, talking about different roles. Uh, I can go back to Jared and may maybe ask him, what are the additional career services that you did highlight? But what are some of these extra skills that students can largely wield or leverage when they go to the US job market? Would you be training them for communication or soft skills or being a better leader at work? What all do you take them through? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in terms of real quick, before we get to soft skills, you're certainly getting the technical skills as well. You know, examples of that take into account the cybersecurity program you know, you're getting prepared also for industry certifications like the CISSP that you're going to need regardless. And the, these all these programs are built in a thoughtful way because they have practitioners who have also helped to build the curriculum. So they know what the industry needs right now. So technically, you can not only be prepared for maybe more entry level positions coming out, you know, if, if you know, you're just getting into some of these topics, but also to potentially be a manager in the field because you're getting a lot of the skills that you're gonna need technically. Now, as far as the soft skills question, um, there are a few ways that uh, our programs are helping to, to build that. Of course, as, as Xavier touched upon, we have that, that on-campus resource like career services that can help with resume, with mock interviews, and also helping you build a networking plan, right? 
that that's one big aspect of of navigating the field is building that network so when you combine the scholar practitioners and our on-campus offices you have great resources and again because of our small class sizes our on-campus resources are going to be a little bit less taxed a little bit less um, busy and taken up that you might expect uh, because we keep the class sizes small so it's really a manage more manageable load for everybody but then uh, on top of that soft skills wise that's also built into your experience in the program. You know, the faculty understand, you know, if you ask them, hey, here are like four networking events that I found for data analytics coming up in the New York area. Uh, what do you recommend I go to? Uh, they'll recommend to you what they think you should go to, but also they'll tell you what to do at these events and things like that. So there are aspects of, of that that I think are really important to have in mind. And because we're not like a factory, you know, just pumping students through programs. We're a university that cares a lot about every student and the experience you're going to have. It helps helps you a lot for for both the technical and the soft skills. Got that. Just want to know if Jackie or Xavier wish to add anything to it in terms of helping students build. Yes, Jackie, yeah. please go ahead. Yeah, I think um, just in addition to what um, Jared just said, uh, students are doing this uh, project-based learning. So they do any um, big project. And through the semesters, they are doing a lot smaller projects. But when you look at these projects, when they do their defense, they do their review, the panelists who are coming to listen to them, asking them questions, oftentimes they're from the industries. They, some of them even from the UK, from Europe, it's not only in New York, it goes beyond New York. So I think uh, through that process, students are polishing their uh, communication skill, how to present uh, cutting edge technology through uh, a language that people can understand. Absolutely, that, that does make sense. Uh, how many gap years are acceptable? So for example, so uh, I, I'm not sure what's intended here, but I think what's largely uh, asked by students to us is, if I graduated, let's say five years ago, and I haven't been doing anything, am I still accepted? And some of them are actually doing work. So they want to know sometimes how far back can my graduation date actually be to be accepted into an MS degree course now. So if I graduated 10 years ago, but I've built a very strong, uh, you know, work profile for myself, am I still accepted? So both ways, I think we'd love to answer them, Jared, Xavier. Yeah, so we highly value work, relevant work experience in short. Uh, so if you graduated a little bit further back, but you've had relevant work experience, that's definitely valued. Perfect. Uh, and if they've not done anything then, how, how far back can their graduation date be? I mean, not done enough is that they've still been stuck there. They've taken their own time, some health issue, anything. Well, we do take a holistic approach to each application review. So from that perspective, we're not going to look at an application and say, you know, this student graduated six years ago and hasn't had experience since and just categorically deny a student. We're going to look at every aspect of an application holistically and then to understand if the student could be a good fit and be successful, or if there are any, uh, any additional pathways the student can take in advance of the program, right? Taking into account, understanding the quality preparation they'll have through IIITB, but also is there anything else they can do to help make them good candidates for the program now or in the future? So I think if any candidate has a doubt about their candidacy or otherwise, generally we would just recommend apply, apply earlier, right? Apply as soon as you can. So you have time to fill in any gaps that you need throughout the admissions process. Thanks, Jared. Uh, somebody's asking, is 3GP a required in upgrades ACP? Well, no. Uh, for your bachelor's, you need a 60% grade. And for your advanced certificate program is where you need a 3.0 GPA at least to transition which is easy as long as you're invested and devoted. 
Uh, we've got one more question, Xavier and Jared. We're bang on time, by the way. Super happy about that. Uh, we've got. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, I think the good part is Xavier still has time to play one more video that Ooh. we missed out on. Just give me one second. I will just um, get that out. The questions out. Endless questions. Um. I have 41 backlogs. Will I be eligible? 41 backlogs during four years or three years. Do Does the child still have a chance? Well, I can take that question. I will say uh, no, because you know, the time you spent um, at here, she was only one year. So the system wouldn't allow you to fill that many times. So 41 uh, uh, is not acceptable. Thanks for that, Jackie. So prompt, <laughs> considering the current market scenario, which program? So, Jared, Jackie, and Xavier, Zach, Zaki Mehdi wants to know, considering the current market scenario, which program will be more suitable in terms of the return on investment? So largely, look, uh, Zaki, just so you know, all of them cost the same, right? Now, a bigger question is, which one pays off the most? That I think I can route to Jackie or Jared. It's a good question. Um, we we haven't, I don't know that maybe Jackie or Xavier have, but I haven't yet tabulated that data across the, the programs. But what I can tell you is that each of these fields have so many open positions, uh, whether in New York, the US or globally, they all have excellent career trajectories. And at the end of the day, they can all be very lucrative. So my recommendation is, and sh probably should always be to look at the program that has academics and professional opportunities that are most exciting for you, because you wanna play the long game with your career. You know, you wanna, you wanna think about what is gonna propel me into something where Sure, I get paid a lot, but I enjoy, you know, every day, right, of working on um, projects that I have a passion for and that I care about. So, you know, on the one hand, you might look at the field, right, and things could change too. Let's say AI right now has more lucrative opportunities than, than, uh, than cybersecurity, that could change later. So it's really more about you and your passions and where you can be successful and where you can make a difference because all three of these fields are, are, are amazing in that sense. I think the answer to the question would be different if we weren't talking about three very lucrative fields. You know, if, if one of them were less so, we would focus on that too and explain that and caution, but no caution with any of these fields. Absolutely, I think that does make sense. And for all the attendees here, especially Zaki who asked this, uh, the average salaries for STEM grads in the US could anywhere between be about 75 to even a hundred thousand dollars what's more important sometimes is are there enough employability opportunities are there enough spots enough vacancies with jared just reassured that there are ample jobs and i think all, all three of these are extremely new age every company needs cybersecurity. every company now would increasingly need artificial intelligence specialist and to talk about DA or DS, uh, you know, it is absolutely required. You know, it is absolutely needless to mention that. And I think Jared wants to add something to that. Please go ahead, Jared. Thank you so much. I want to speak to the to the finding jobs piece. So as you saw, we have excellent statistics, right? 95% employed within six months of graduation. That's great. In general, though, it, even with an abundance of positions out there, even with the skills and the experience you get in the program, it is a challenge to find employment that you're seeking. And, and, uh, and there are challenges surely associated with being an international student coming to the US and probably most countries in terms of finding positions. So that's why you wanna look for the right opportunity and the right university that can put you in a position for success where you know if I work hard, if I, if I t undertake some of the actions that they recommend, if I do certain things to take advantage of my location and the industry that I'm, that I'm in, 
then I can be successful. So that's why the way that our programs are built, I think could be really great for students, whether domestic or international, because of the small class sizes, the faculty accessibility, the curating, the networking events, the way the curriculum is built, exposure to industry, um, class structure and timing, all of that, um, because it's not so simple in terms of outcome, but our programs can really put you in a very good position. So it's, it's worth noting. Thanks, Jared. Uh, at this point, I think the only thing that needs to be addressed is part-time work in the campus if they want to be a TA or a research assistant or a graduate assistantship. What do they do? And how does part-time work in campus look like? So just for all the attendees, you know, an F1 visa uh, does not give you the right to work off campus. You, you can take internships or a CPT, uh, but largely in a one year course, I don't think that does make a lot of sense. But I think what is ex extremely important for Jared and Xavier or Jackie to share their opinion on is part time work inside the campus and how much does it give you in terms of exposure experience? Yes, Jared, Jackie uh, and Xavier, any of you can answer that. Yeah, Xavier, do you want to speak to this? I can speak to it too or Jackie. Yeah, certainly graduate assistantships are available for students to, to be a part of the campus community, have a job on campus. Um, traditionally, these are students are informed of these throughout the semester once they become available and they can engage in the process as if they were you know, going through the hiring process, reaching out, applying um, and hoping that the job makes a good fit for them. Can they also imply prior to them moving on campus? Can they still be in India and start start applying towards the end? It sort of depends on when the position becomes available. You know, a lot of times they become available during uh, fall or spring semester. Um, there's a possibility if a, if a position becomes available over the summer that will start in the fall, then there could be that opportunity to start looking at it then. Uh, and then the other thing that we might recommend also to students in general is they can look at our YU career site for university positions in general. Sometimes there are student positions that may be posted outside the school in case that works with, with the visa requirements, but it's just something else to note. Thank you, Jared. I think we answered all the question. One second. Can you recommend best specialization and masters for mechanical engineering? Was well, Sudarshan, uh, we have uh, for Mechanical Case Western Reserve University, which is in Ohio, it's in Cleveland. I am sending you the link. Uh, in Mechanical a Specialization, so we've got a Case Western Reserve program for Mechanical. It'll be a MS. And what it also does is it gives you robotics and artificial intelligence as a major. Um, so, so, so it's a dual specialized degree. I think you may want to look at it, but in the general interest of everybody here, I, I think it's better if you explore the link. I've given you the link on your question. Uh, I'm not sure if I would be joining for this program in probably this year, but maybe next year may plan. But would it be the same procedure then as like going for the triple ITB and then at the campus? Well, yes, for 10 months you study online. Meanwhile, you can work, get part time work experience or full time work experience like Jared, Jackie, Xavier have been reaffirming reiterating pushing that we highly value work experience so if you can get about 10 months to one year of work ex in india i think that's all the way better you're saving money like jared was mentioning the upgrade portion is actually your scholarship because you're actually saving up to uh nine or ten lakhs of rupees when it comes to living expenses when it comes to your academic fee as well because nine credits are being waived off uh, up to nine right so yes that's going to be the procedure uh detail if any chance student not able to get visa in the very same intake what are the options so then you get for the next intake and we've got plenty of options uh we've got of course a jan and september intake i can go back to jackie jared and xavier and ask them how many intakes are there for yeshiva university and that's your right two intakes yes fall and spring right yes right. Right. Not that. case western offers the accelerator yes you do one semester in india and then three semesters 
uh, actually two semesters, not three, two semesters uh, when you go to Case Western campus. Uh, do you get the fee waiver for GTA GRA role? Uh, I think you make part-time wages, whether you get a fee waiver or not, that I can ask Jared that if they have a graduate assistantship or a TA role, do they get any fee waivers per se? The, so the question is... If uh, I can okay. save some more money. Graduate, graduate assistantships are hourly uh, positions where based on the number of hours worked, you can then you know apply that towards your tuition. Uh, they won't completely waive tuition though, um, but can help with a portion of it. So in short, there aren't there aren't uh, tuition fee waiver Please. opportunities through the ex the university. You'll need to find external opportunities for that. Thank you so much. I think that marks well, the end of it. We you've been great amazing wonderful uh, as hosts and speakers i think we've been able to answer a lot of questions we've addressed almost 22 questions in the q a box and about 10 of them on the chat box uh, super thrilled i have posted all the program links on your chat box um, please feel free to apply to yeshua university i'm sure they're super excited to host you in new york city Not the why, but I think studying there uh, would absolutely blow you away in terms of your exposure to different cultures. I remember somebody gave me a fact once that in a New York City subway, every third person is speaking a different language. So I'm sure you'd, you'd be uh, absolutely taken aback when you actually see that. I think studying somewhere, uh, which is one of the better economic powerhouses of the US, it'll give you a lot in terms of experience. So wishing you guys all the best. You can always come back to us for any questions, but I think we were helpful about guiding you which MS, uh, AI, cybersecurity, and data an analytics, all three of them are offered by Yeshiva and should give you the most amount of uh, return on investment like you guys asked. Um, I'd let Jackie, Jared, and Xavier each add the last note and then we can take a leave. Well, I think, uh, Panet, um, as I said at the very beginning, we thank you and Upred for this great opportunity for us to meet and talk with students. And also, I want to say thank you so much for the students. I know some of you are working professionals. You are um, taking some time out of your busy day to meet with us to learn about Yeshiva University and the programs that can take your career to the next level. So we look forward to working with you, working with Upgrade to help you with your applications process. Absolutely, I would, I would add, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for the time, um, understanding that you're all busy and, and have lives of your own. And if Yeshiva University is, is a right fit for, for you, we look forward to working with you in that process. Yeah, and to echo what Jack and Xavier said, just want to thank you all for taking the time. You know, if I were you right now in the evening in India, I'd probably just be stuffing my face with butter chicken or whatever else it is that I'd want to be doing. So, uh, and you might even be doing that. And if so, enjoy. But otherwise, appreciate you taking the time. We're excited to see your applications coming through. Never hesitate to be in touch with our wonderful partners at Upgrad if you have questions. And we hope we'll have the chance to meet you in New York City soon enough. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us for education loan for picking the right course. I think we'd love to help you and to get you across to the United States and for you to build a massive, robust, lucrative career for yourself in technology. Thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward to hosting you again. Thanks, everybody. Bye.